Here's the thing. I really like my voice tonight when I'm talking clearly and I don't have that little crap going on in the background. But I'm going to mm-hmm. end up like muting myself 50 times tonight. Um, why don't you just hit the mute button now? Thank you. <laughs> All right, folks. I think I'm just going to do the show by myself. <laughs> um, so Amos will just be the producer and uh, push the buttons like a monkey. Push the button, monkey. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 171 for Thursday, the 26th of April, 19, uh, was it 1988? No, that's not right. Uh, uh, 2008? No, 2018. There we go. Thursday, 26 April, 2018. I'm Amos. Uh, this is the show where two lifelong friends uh, celebrate all things geek. That's Kent. He's the other of the two friends I had just mentioned. I guess that's kind of important. Um, <laughs> hey, bud. How's it? How, how's your week? Ah, uh, um, you know, um, it's a thing. Uh, so when I was on the flight line way back when, uh-huh, uh-huh. I would consistently hurt myself, but not know how I hurt myself. Okay. So if you I can see that. that. Like, so you're working on an airplane and then, you know, you go to put a tool away or, or go, you know, to, to flip to the next page in the technical order or whatever. And you realize that your hand is bleeding. Right. Or somebody points out that your forehead's bleeding or, um, <laughs> you know, whatever. Right. Well, that sort of thing struck this week. Um, what day was uh, two days ago? So Tuesday, I was like in a little bit of pain, like like kind of in my gut or something. I thought it was just like a stomach ache or something. Okay. And um, it's or, like, yeah, okay, whatever. Right? Yeah, something. <laughs> and then yesterday, Wednesday, I wake up and I've just got this weird, like abdominal pain hmm. that I cannot place. Like, okay. Okay. This is very weird. And it then eventually just kind of like just gets worse. And like it's in my shoulder now and like it's just kind of everywhere. By the time I get home from work, it's like, oh, my God, this is like the worst shit. And uh, so I open up the app for WebMD. I dare not go to the website because (laughs) you do the advertisement written uh, website. Exactly. But the app is actually pretty good. So I went to the symptom checker Mm -hmm. and like, all right, here's all my shit. Here's my here's where I'm hurting. And one of the wait, things- wait, 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 wait. Let's go down the list of symptoms here. Um, you had stomach ache or, or yep. pa- pa- pain in your abdominal area. Right. Um, trouble bending over, like pain it went, it got got worse as you like bent around. Yeah, ben- bending and twisting. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Um, uh, a, 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 a uh, uh, bleeding asshole. No, 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 no. That wasn't one. Uh, of them. No, sorry, that's not no, a that symptom. Was... That's what you are. Um, ah, ha, 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 ha. W- what other symptoms did you have? Um, well, those were the main ones. Um, uh, lifting things caused pain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, laying in certain angles or sitting a certain way would cause pain. Okay. Uh, and it, it just it was mostly just things causing me pain. <laughs> And uh, what, what's the, the most thing, what's the most absurd thing that you found caused you pain? Um, wiping my ass. No, did wiping pretty- your ass cause you more pain than actually shitting? <laughs> In this case, yes. Hmm. Uh, hemorrhoids was not the uh, not on there, uh, but then again, I didn't enter the symptom pain while wiping ass. Uh, and you probably should, should have, but okay. I mean, okay. So, so moving on, uh, uh, what, what did the old web MD tell you? Uh, well, first of all, there's seven types of cancer that I might've had. Um, uh, okay. But was, moving was past cancer of cancer, the personality, one of them, uh, it might've been on there. It was just, you know, the Latin technical terms. So right. probably that was one of them. Cancer uh, personalities. But, but but moving past the cancers, pretty consistently, no matter which combination of, of symptoms I, I put it, because I, I did it a few times, uh, the thing that consistently showed up was broken, cracked, or bruised rib. Ooh. And I was like, well, that's weird, because I, like, I was poking and prodding on my belly, hmm. like trying to 
find, uh, you know, localize the pain a little right. more. I couldn't find anything. And then it struck me, wait a minute, I have ribs on my back as well. Uh, yeah, there's like three floating <laughs> ribs back there on each side. <laughs> yeah, so the <laughs> lowest rib on my left side back, mm-hmm. I touched there and I about went through the fucking roof. It was so painful. <laughs> Like found it. <laughs> um, yeah, that that's uh, ribs are a funny a funny animal. I told you how I dislocated a rib while I was in Okinawa, right? Uh, yes, but but please refresh my memory and <laughs> and and regale the audience with the story of that. Um, I'm sitting there in the in the BX playing uh, some Spider Man game or whatever was on the console there at the BX while I was waiting for my my now ex wife to finish shopping. And beside me was a stroller, and I had, I believe I had Ashley in the stroller, and Amber was with uh, with my ex-wife. And uh, my ex-wife was walking by, she said, okay, I'm ready. So I just dropped the controller, because I'd been ready for a while. That's why I was playing the video game, because I was done looking at the same shit that I'd seen 500 times that week, right? So I dropped mm-hmm. the controller and grabbed the stroller and just started pushing it. As I'm getting up towards the front of the store, as we're getting ready to check out, it starts getting like hard to breathe. Like Every time I'm taking a deep breath, my whole chest just kind of hurts. Yep, and uh, it, we I, we go and we get in the van, and I'm climbing in the van, and the van like just sitting in the van. I told my, my uh, told you know told Lisa I was like I've got I'm gonna have to be a passenger. I'm not gonna be able to drive because this is a stick shift, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and if getting in the van hurts, then driving a stick shift is not gonna make get us you know make make ha- make happy happen, <laughs> right? <clears throat> so um, I'm in this seat, and of course the roads on Okinawa were shit. They paved the uh, main drag from one gate to the for like from the front gate to the back gate. They paved that right after I got there for the G8 summit. And oh, it was yeah. beautiful, but every other road on that entire base was complete garbage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we get back to the house and I'm having trouble getting out of the van. Mm-hmm. And, and yes, it's it's a Japanese van, but it's not like I had to like sit down into it. It was basically like my butt went went horizontal to get into it. You know, it was just it was level with with my standing posture. Right. Get in the house. I managed to carry a couple bags in and uh, hold my daughter's hand on the way in the door. They go upstairs. My ex-wife goes upstairs. I'm just sitting there, and I decide, okay, well, maybe I'm having a back spasm. Because that's kind of what it feels like. It feels like just there's a tightening in my back. So I lay down, lay flat on my back, try to let my back relax. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, and I can't get up. <laughs> just I can't get up. There's no possible way for me to try to get up. Right. Um, Lisa puts the kids to bed, comes back downstairs and, you know, about, you know, 10, 15 minutes later, I'm still laying on the floor. I can't get, I can't roll over to either side. I can't like do a crunch to sit up or whatever. And she helps me roll over and then helps me stand up. And as soon as I stood back up, my back just started tightening again, like even worse. Now it was hard to breathe. I couldn't stand straight. I couldn't walk straight. Nothing else. So we end up going to the ER. Uh, Lisa calls a friend over. She comes over, watches the girls. Uh, Lisa and I head into the ER. And the ER is uh, not on our base. It's on Camp Lester, which is like the next base over, which is now we've got to go through like five clicks of crappy Okinawa roads in addition to the already crappy base roads. Right. And not to mention about, what, 38 stoplights, I think, in that uh, approximately two-mile drive? Right? Like, it's a highway. It's a, it's Highway 58. You'd think it'd, it'd be a highway, but no, it's just a normal surface street they call a highway because <laughs> they don't know how to drive. Um, which, actually, they drew, drove the shitty roads better than we Americans did, so I shouldn't be saying that. But it sure <laughs> seemed like they didn't know how to drive when we were driving amongst them. You know, Especially when we were driving on the right side of the road. Oh, don't get me started on that. Because Lisa did that once, did the wrong wrong turn coming out of a place, and yeah. she went on the so, she went on the right side of the road, and instead of the left side of the road, and of course that's when the traffic started coming at us. It's like just keep going and drive off to the side, and they'll just let you go. And it did, but man, she was freaked out. Oh yeah, and that's when you turn on your windshield wipers. <laughs> yeah, the windshield wipers are also on the opposite side of where where they should be, right. and you think it's the turn signal, and it's actually the windshield wipers, and right. that was incredibly common. Um, so anyway, we get to Camp Lester, and they go and they say, "You're ha- you're having back spasms. We're going to give you a shot of Demerol in the butt, and give you give you uh, some uh, some Valium and some Vicodin. Mm-hmm. Take each one twelve hours offset from the other. Okay, cool." Vicodin makes you feel good. Valium makes you feel good. 
So for the next three days, they gave me they gave me a work release for three days, um, and I couldn't get an appointment until the fourth day. So I was actually at work on the fourth day before I could go into the doctor, and um, they were like, I, I go in there and I'm still high as hell. I, I was I- at work. And they're like, oh, yeah, you should not be here because we're running APUs, we're running aircraft engines, this and that. You shouldn't be here. I was like, okay, cool. So they sent me home about an hour before my appointment, which that was kind of useless anyway. Go to my appointment. Doctor comes in. He goes, okay, so this hurts, this hurts, this hurts. You can't lay down. You can't get up. can't do this. You can't do that. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to help you sit up, right? And I'm going to pull your arm this way. I'm going to pull this arm this way. I'm going to squeeze your leg. And now I'm going to come over here. And he comes up behind me. And I'm thinking, what are you doing behind me? Like, he's holding my hand against my knees. And, like, I'm all in this weird, weird position. <laughs> and he reaches around me and just squeezes. And there's a sound. Like, literally a hand, like, like that sound. And I was like, what the hell was that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I could breathe. Yeah, he popped that rib back in the socket. I dislocated a rib. Yeah, that's man. See, I don't know if that's what I did. I I have not gone to the doctor for this. Mm. I uh, took some Motrin, <laughs> and that seemed to uh, the, the uh, de in de inflame, uninflame, de flam, de flam, de flam, de flam. Hmm. <laughs> it uninflamed my uh, stuff, uh, and it seems. But but yeah, I have no idea how this happened. Hmm. It, it just well, okay. Maybe you should ask Stephanie. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's. I think she's lying to me because she says she doesn't know either. <laughs> uh, she knows. <laughs> right. Oh man, I did. I did get some time to do something fun though before the whatever rib incident. Uh, I did go to Super Troopers two this weekend. Oh yeah. Yeah, are you a Super Troopers fan? Um, I mean, I enjoyed the movie, but I was half drunk the only time I've ever seen it, so I can't really commentate on it. I know, uh, I know, I laughed a lot, but I can't remember any of the movie because I was uh, that drunk. Yeah, see, Super Troopers is one of those movies that I I watch often. I've mm. seen it dozens of times, like countless times. I can't even tell you how many times I've seen it. Um, classic. I mean, it's so great. So I had pretty high expectations for Super Troopers 2. Uh, they, what was it, two years ago, I think, they did an Indiegogo to raise the initial funds to basically mm-hmm. convince the studio that, look, we're going to do this with or without you. And uh, the studio was like, okay, all right, we're in too. <laughs> so I was, I was pretty excited. Uh, so we went to see it. Yeah. It was pretty good. It's pretty yeah. funny. But It is not... As magical to me as the first one, I don't know that it has the rewatchability like the first one. Mm-hmm. But to be fair, few comedies do for me. Yeah, this is one of like probably four comedies that I will watch just over and over. The others being Step Brothers, Friday. Uh, that might be it. Hmm. And Super Troopers. See, Step uh, Brothers uh, didn't didn't enthrall me either. Like I thought it was funny, but it was just. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, and I know I'm the odd man out. I'm the only person I know that has actually watched the movie that doesn't just put it on repeat 24 seven. Right. Um, yeah. I just, yeah. I just, I, just, I don't know. That entire movie start to finish. I love yeah. it. Uh, but yeah, so, so thumbs up for super troopers too, but don't expect it to be as great, like as phenomenal as the first one. But you, it's still you, pretty funny. Are you going to have to watch it again because you were laughing so hard the first time that you missed some jokes? Because that's that, what our friend Cabo said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cabo loved this movie. He went several times, at least twice that I know of. Jeez. He went to it. And, I'm, you know, I've got the movie pass. I might go. I might go again. or And maybe again. I don't know. Um, but I, I'm not going to see it this weekend. That's for damn sure. Right. Because Well, no. No one is. Avengers Infinity War comes out this weekend. Right. And holy fuck am I hype. I yeah. cannot wait. This is going to be probably the movie event of the year. I'm not looking forward to the crowds, but I cannot wait to be sitting in that darkened theater. Hmm. It is a phenomenal, dude. I So this is the movie that I know more about because of all the differing aspects of the movie than any other Marvel movie that I've gone to see. Right, and because, you have not seen all the MCU movies. You've seen what? A uh, little less than half of them. A probably? little, a little less than half. I think I'm sitting. A little, we we just recently did a, did a recount. And I think I came in just like two under half. 
So, okay. But I've seen I've seen like all the hodgepodge. Like I have I've seen one of the Thor movies and I've seen the original Avengers movie and you know I've seen like uh first two of the Iron Man movies and mm-hmm. I watched part of the third. Like the ending of the third was all right, but I couldn't see the first half because it just bored me to shit. Um, <laughs> you know, and I've seen I've seen both of the uh 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 what's the what's the Gru movies the Groot movies the Groot um Gru oh um uh yeah the Spickable Me. No, no, not 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 despicable me. Oh, you said oh, you said Groot. I heard Gru. No, I said Groot. Well, wait. wait quick aside, since mm-hmm. we're talking about Gru from Despicable Me, you've seen those movies, right? I have. Like with the minions mm-hmm. and all that. Mm-hmm. There is a dude that works at my movie theater that looks like a young Gru. Yeah. He looks like Gru with hair. So young Gru. It's fucking hilarious to me. Nice. Yeah, it's great. Awesome. So, it, so Groot, you're talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes, baby Groot. Yes. Now I have to say Groot. I have to like accent the, or uh, 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 emphasize uh, the t sound yeah. at the end. Groot. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I, I, I've I've seen both of those. I enjoyed those movies uh, as standalone movies. Actually, each one of them standing alone by itself was was a pretty good movie. Um, yeah. But now I, I know a lot about this fucking movie. <laughs> And it's not just because of like different pieces of the MCU I've I've watched, but there's also like everybody on YouTube. If you have a YouTube channel that talks about movies, you've broken down what the Infinity Stone or what 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 all the stones are. are the, right, they're not the Infinity Stones, right? There's only one Infinity Stone. No, no, no. There's there's six Infinity Stones. Okay, so the whole group of them are, are, are Infinity Stones, and each one has a different power. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Which one of them is its only power is to, em- to emphasize the powers of the others or some shit? I mean, I've like I can't avoid it. I, I put YouTube on just as a thing in the background, and I just hear the shit. And it anyway. So, um, family probably won't watch it because well, this is the first weekend where we don't have soccer, so I think we're just going to relax this weekend. Hmm. Um. But I'm sure other people will, and I'm sure we will no longer be top of the heap on the Diamond Club Deep BT movie draft. <sighs> right, like right now. Well, I don't know. Are are we are we in the lead? I Let's think find so. out. Let's, Let's find, find out. out by hitting this little thing right here. Welcome to your BT movie draft minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of April twenty third, two thousand eighteen. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. You can't reason with a tiger when your head is in its mouth. Worst staff meeting ever. Let's go to the scoreboard. Teams the Bond Squad and Walking Drunk are tied for last place, still waiting for their first film. Team Have a Drink is in fourth place with $33.4 million. Team Movie Party's in third place with $48.7 million. Then there's second place. With Ready Player One pegging in another $7 million, Team Game Night has $126.7 million. But with A Quiet Place, Rampage, and Truth or Dare combined box office take of $48.8 million, Team Ritual Misery holds on to first place with a buttery $230.5 million. That's your movie draft minute. All totals are accurate as of 6 p.m. Tuesday, April 24th, 2018. Uh, oh, first of all, yeah. thank you, Big Voice Jay. You are the best person ever. Mm. <clears throat> also, dude, we have a sizable lead. Like, we are whipping ass right now. We almost double the second place team. In our in yeah. our gross, we're like we're close to double. Yeah, like we've we've got more money ourselves than all of the other teams combined. Yes, yes. Even the ones that haven't had movies come out, we we even add those in there, and we and we're still ahead. <laughs> yeah, we added all the zeros together. <laughs> turns uh, turns out zero is equal to zero. Uh, and if you watch John Oliver, you know that zero is less than ten. Um, God, you you got to start watching the show, dude. You you have to. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll get back to that, um, <laughs> I, dude. I think this might be our last week in first place. Uh, yes, and as I said in the Discord, I think this week will will cause a shift in the first place uh, uh, rank, and I think it will be the last lead change of this movie draft with all the hype around this movie. Yeah, that very well could be, dude. Mm. I so have a drink. Has Infinity War, 
They've mm-hmm. already racked up thirty-eight thousand dollars from two shitty movies uh, thir- that they got. Thirty-eight million, but <laughs> I say two shitty movies. Uh, Super Troopers Two is one of the movies that they got, and it's not it's not doing real hot at the box office, uh, which isn't super surprising. I mean, it's a comedy. That, you know, comedies don't draw like you know hundred million. Uh, right. it, it's sitting right now. It's sitting just below eighteen million, mm-hmm. which is. That's respectable. Well, I mean, I, I Feel Pretty came out the same weekend, 420, which should be a good time for comedies. And <laughs> right. I Feel Pretty came in at 20 million. So, there, I mean, between the two of them is 37 million, almost 38 million dollars. I guess just a hair, hair over 38 million dollars. Um, right. They're, they are guaranteed to get to easily, easily 200 million dollars in the first weekend mm-hmm. for for Infinity War, yeah. which is going to bring bring them right back. Up to us. If they get two hundred million, they will be tied with us. Yeah, and that's not including the, uh, you know, what we because Rampage is one of our movies that mm-hmm. came out last week. It's doing okay. It's it's bringing us in some money. It's got seventy million right now. Mm-hmm. You know, if that thing performs into the second week, which is, I don't think it's going to do much, but it's it'll probably bring in another like twenty million. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it might be close, dude. It might be close, but I I think we're going to be a close second. I I don't even think it's going to be close. I I think I think um, I think Have a Drink is going to bring in about four hundred this weekend. Yeah, and it's just going to trail down from there. But it's not going to matter because that four hundred is going to be amazing. I am more focused on the deal, the movie uh, movie value per uh, fake dollar per draft dollar. Um, right. we again are double anybody else with, uh, the, <laughs> a quiet place bringing in $9.7 million per, uh, draft dollar that we spent on it. The next closest, closest is truth or dare, which was also our purchase at four and a half million per dollar spent. So I'm feeling pretty good on that one. Do we have a prize for that ranking? That's what I want to know. Right. Best value. Yeah, I, right. I think- <laughs> We, we, yeah, we need to we need to make that happen because uh, that's probably our best chance here. <laughs> oh my gosh! Because yeah, have a drink. Right now, it's looking like they might run away with this thing. Yeah. Uh, but we do have to we, we have to watch out for the other teams though. Like Movie Party has a a, a pretty good slate. Mm. They they've got uh, they got Solo, Incredibles got, two. Cre- yeah, like they've got man, they've got some pretty good stuff and and a few filler movies in there uh, to round out their their list they they man it's gonna be rough we might finish like third i'm i'm guessing third i'm see there we we have we have one in the very end of the draft like uh, just a couple weeks before it ends mission impossible fallout that might bring in a couple hundred million dollars it yeah. might um other than uh, that well, we're also, we've also got hotel transylvania 3 which is right that's gonna bring in a lot of kids i mean it's not gonna bring in incredibles 2 money but it's coming out at a time where, like, it's it's going to be kind of by itself as far as kid movies go. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be respectable. I think I think we can I think we can manage second place. The only thing that might kill us is if yeah. if Solo does as well as if Avengers does. Yeah, if it does, we're we're dead in the water at three. It's easy. Well, it's not going to do Avengers money, I don't think. But then again, it's Star Wars, so it, it could though. Yeah, if if it comes good. out that first weekend and everybody's just like, yeah, uh, Ron Howard turned that into a masterpiece. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. If it's good, like if it's yeah. not not just good for the fanboys, if it's a good movie just on its own. Like what other movie? What other movie recently would it have to compare to? Because uh, it has to beat Rogue One, right? Like it has to beat Rogue One. Oh, it better. Like it. I mean, and Rogue One did very well. Right. Rogue One did, you know, regardless of what critics say or what a lot of fanboys or, you know, people saying that, you know, it was too derivative, it was too fan servicey, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> whatever. You bought a ticket, dude. <laughs> like, everybody <laughs> saw that movie. Um, a lot of money. I, I think the style of this movie, though, Solo is going to be more of a adventure, like old West style mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, like kind of the firefly vibe right like it's it's old west in space kind of thing okay um so i'm not really sure what we'd want to compare it to i mean serenity maybe <laughs> from like years and years ago um mm. I, don't, I don't know 
I, I think it's going to be great, though. Wow. Oh, man. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tell you that this weekend we had a lot of soccer. The, twin, yeah. the Twins, uh, they, they played Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. They won all three games. It was freaking cold. <laughs> right. Um, and we, Tuesday was the, was the big crosstown rivalry between uh, Wasilla and Colony High Schools. Okay. And Wasilla was the number one team last year. Like, they... They were the team to beat last year. Uh, in fact, the, the regional championships came down to Colony versus Wasilla in a uh, kickoff, in a, in a PK kickoff or whatever. You know, we do the five kicks and blah, 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 blah at the end of a soccer match if it's tied. Oh, um, right. That's what it came down to last year, and they beat them by one. <clears throat> this year, we were out there, and I started taking pictures. I was doing pictures on the, the, the near sideline, you know, behind the players and stuff like that taking pictures there and one of the refs made a bad call and I had to go to the other side because my mouth likes to pop off at the refs when I start getting angry at the game and I wanted to stay as impartial as possible because I'm there you know not, I'm I'm being allowed to be closer to the game because I'm taking pictures I don't want to abuse that privilege right right so I go to the other side and we're trailing one to zero and finally they get a score and it's one one I'm like oh thank goodness Whew. man so good okay cool okay and then the bad call started again and at this time, I had I had my coveralls on. We had thirty five mile an hour or 30, 35 degree wind or air with like a thirty five mile an hour wind cruising in across the field, freezing cold. Right towards the end of the game, it started actually sleeting a little bit. Uh, the kids were still out there playing soccer, doing their thing, and I can't take pictures anymore because my 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 shutter finger is frozen. Like it's just I'm not like I'm I'm hiding it more than I'm using it. So I'm basically, I have nothing else to do other than bitch at the refs. And so I started bitching at the refs and eventually got, got a whistle called blown on me, which is the refs way of telling me shut up before you call, before I, I, I have a foul for the team that you're supporting because that's what they do. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, welcome to high school sports. Um, yeah, that's lame. But also um, uh, Alaska uh, can fuck itself. Um, I don't know. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we had like 70 degree weather this weekend it was fucking beautiful here yeah we, we we had it was, it was an odd weekend anyway they um so they go on and they win that game two to zero because the goal that they that wasilla caught or the wasilla got actually got called called off because it was a penalty kick and one of the kids had rushed early uh which is actually something that had happened to uh the colony team earlier in the weekend so it was kind of like a, a tit for tat but um, yeah, so they won and that was like the big, that's like that, that consumed the entire weekend. That's all we did this weekend is just that it was, it was awesome. So that's why I didn't have really anything in the show notes tonight because I didn't do anything besides that. Um, <laughs> and we rearranged the rooms. We, uh, we rearranged the rooms because I have news. My daughter is actually going to move up here this summer. Oh yeah. My daughter, Amber, my 18 year old, she's, yeah. uh, She's finally broken the news to her mom, and that was a whole thing. I don't want to get into because of you know law, lawsuits and stuff. But um, <laughs> she's oh, gonna man. end up moving up here this summer, so I finally have one of my uh, one of my older daughters with living with us. It's gonna be awesome. That's, that's amazing, dude. Yeah, really, really Great. psyched about that. So um, since you're gonna have another mouth to feed and you're gonna be super poor, uh, it'd be nice if somebody gave us money. <laughs> Because, because, that's what matters. <laughs> so, if, if if you want to donate to a charity that can uh, help Amos feed another mouth, because I don't have enough as it is, um, yeah. So, uh, so cruise on over to uh, patreon.com slash ritual misery, and uh, if you give a fuck about the show, give a buck to the show, and we'll call it even, and we'll continue, <laughs> we'll continue uh, blasting our, our 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 thoughts into your ears. And making complete asses of ourselves uh, each week because that's what we do for you. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> yes, patreon.com slash ritual misery. Also, I want to thank all of our subscribers on twitch.tv slash ritual misery. We are live every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Pacific. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, 9 p.m. Central. Mm hmm. Uh, 7 p.m. Pacific. Jesus. You just need to get rid of the central thing and just go with the 7 p.m. Pacific because that's, that's yeah. the time zone in between us and that's what really matters. 
Yeah, time zones. Am I right? Like you, you're trying to say central, and that's not even your time zone. Like it's I don't know. <laughs> that's why you're it's, always confusing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nine o'clock is the first thing that I said, and I was like, well, fuck, wait, which time zone is it? Oh uh, yeah, central. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I meant to say. Uh, so uh, obviously, Kent is not a time lord. Uh, that, that uh, yeah, I am not. Oh, uh, oh, there there was some doubt in there, huh? You like you were. Consciously, like, hmm, it, hmm, sh- hmm, hmm, should I, should I, hmm, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Something you want to say? I, uh, Kent, I might be is a there, uh, but I'm not a, I'm not oh, a time lord. So. Okay. Oh, well, I mean, hey, whatever you want to classify yourself as, hooker. Um, oh, my gosh. We were just talking about Firefly a few minutes ago. Companion takes on a whole new meaning there. Hmm. So some big news came out today, Air Force-wise, uh, since we are both uh, at least Air Force or prior Air Force, we figured we'd we'd throw this your way. There is a lot of stupid shit you got to do in the Air Force, uh, and and, yeah. and it goes beyond the, like the normal military stuff, like you know cleaning the floors of the bathrooms when you're in basic training and having to stand there with an empty tray while everybody else eats because you were late to to chow or whatever. Like all the stupid little shit you, you you've heard about, it's probably true in some aspect. Like it's all rooted in some sort of truth. Well, we have a new uh, Secretary of the Air Force. This uh, Goldfein fella. That's not a secretary, is it? No, that's that's a that's our chief of staff for the Air Force, right? Yeah, you're talking about General Goldfein. Um, so, the uh, you're talking about the secretary, right? Yeah. So, uh, her name is uh, man. I completely forgot. Yeah, I knew the her- old one. I don't remember the new one. <sighs> Crap. Tells you where I'm at with it. So yeah, gold- I'll tell you in a second. Oh, okay. It's uh, James. Um, <laughs> Secretary of the Air Force, Deborah James. Oh, oh, Deb. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> no, no. Actually, no. It's Heather Wilson. Yeah, because Deb uh, was the old Deborah one. James, the last one. She's the, the last one. See, anyway, we're super knowledgeable about this yeah, Air Force yeah. thing that we're going to talk about. You know what anyway, we are knowledgeable about is this damn Course 14 shit. Yeah. So, but, so Secretary Wilson came in with an initiative like – the Air Force has too much shit. Yeah. There's there's too much uh, red tape bullshit, too many things standing in the way of getting the job done. There's too much training, which might sound like counterintuitive, but when you get trained on the same like uh, uh, you know, cyber security thing over and over and over, like you have it memorized where you can just click the, the answers without reading any of the material or even the full question – because you have it memorized. Uh, it's just, it's too much of everything. Uh, a lot of redundancies and her initiative is cut the bullshit. Mm-hmm. A lot of time, in a lot of cases, there's, there's an air force instruction that contradicts another instruction or a technical order or something. There's contradicting things or there's things that, you know, the AFI only repeats what a DOD manual says or something like that. She's like, cut, cut the shit out, like streamline it, fucking. You, you know, too much. My too favorite much. thing we have, we have what's called, um, I think it's uh, AFI thirty three one twenty three or something like that. Is is standards of writing and communication. So it covers like how how you're supposed to email, how you're supposed to address people in emails and in letters and on memorandums, things like that. Then we also have this other book that's an Air Force handout or Air Force manual. Uh, yeah. the tongue and the quill. Tongue. It is, it's this book that's been updated, but nobody can tell how it's been updated in like the last forty years because it still looks exactly the same as it did when it first came out. Yeah, and, except they add, they added some some current things like email. Um, but it's uh, it's they contradict each other. They directly contradict each other, and they were both getting updated. Neither one was getting changed to reflect the other one. So. You would go to a new base, and that base wants you to follow the AFI way of addressing people and doing signature blocks. Then you go to the, a different base, and that base wants you to do, the, do it the tongue and quill way. So you had to learn both ways, and there'd be the and because there's confusion, there'd be all this muddy middle where people were combining the two ways, and they didn't want and they wanted their own little special shit. And it, that was just one example of how it because we there's there's hundreds of Air Force instructions. No one, and, you know, and that's like Air, hundreds of Air Force instructions, let alone Air Force manuals or Air Force handouts. Well, and and like you said, where, you know, you go to a different base and they follow a different thing. Well, beyond that, like just maintenance instructions, right? You'd have the Air Force one 
21 then 101. You the, then you had, yeah, well, for anything, right? right. And you would have, then you'd have, yeah, actually, let's just talk about well, the 21 101, which is the Maintain basically the rules for working on the flight line. Right. Like how, like who is responsible for what and all that. And then you would have the MAGCOM, the major command version mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. So, so you'd have the Air Combat Command 21 101. Mm-hmm. Then you would have like a wing version mm-hmm. of that. And then sometimes, especially if you have like two different maintenance groups inside of a wing, you'd have a group version of that. Mm. And it was like, what the fuck? Like, we should all be doing the same thing, especially if we're working on F-16s and there's, let's say there's 10 F-16 bases, all 10 F-16 bases should work the same freaking way. Here's, here's how we do it here. For this base in particular, at least when I got here, it's changed a little bit. It's, it's simplified a little bit, and you'll, you'll see where we had AFI 21101, the maintenance Bible. Mm-hmm. Then we had PACAF 21101, which added to Air Force 21101. Mm-hmm. And then we had Third Wing Supplement to 21101. It's actually the Third Wing Supplement to the PACAF Supplement to, to the Air Force instruction that we, that we can maintain locally. Um, add in that that we have both fighter jets and um, uh, heavy jets on this base. So we had CAF SUP 21101. Ah, uh, yes. And MAF SUP. So you had combat air forces and mobility air forces 21101. Each of them had their own different versions that applied to different units on the same base. They've since gotten rid yep. of the CAF and MAF supplement crap. That's now out of the way because that was a dumb idea to, to, be, to begin with. Um, right. Which was actually, initially, that was how they were going to combat this whole, you know, all the F-16 bases do things a little bit differently. Okay, well, now we have a CAF SUP that tells F-16 bases how to do this stuff. And then you have PACAF, which is like this amal- am- amalgamation of different you know, different airplanes, and they've got everything in PACAF. So what does PACAF follow? Well, they have to have their own. So it just complicated things further. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's so, so stupid. Yeah. So there's there's, a, as you can tell, there's a lot of red tape and a lot of redundancies and, and things like that. So that applies to development training as well. So like mm. leadership training – uh, uh, required schools for, uh, for promotion eligibility, things like that. Well, the air force probably about, I don't know, 10 or so years ago had the, oh no, it was longer ago than that. Probably 10 or 15 years ago had the wonderful idea that they would come up with distance learning courses Hmm. that would supplement in person, like in residence courses. So in order to be eligible for promotion, as an NCO or non-commissioned officer, we would have to attend certain schools. So starting with Airman Leadership School mm-hmm. to go from E4 to E5, mm-hmm. and then to go from E6 to E7, <sighs> you will have had to have been to the NCO Academy, mm-hmm. non-commissioned officers academy, and then to be promoted past that. Really, well, actually, I think you're, it's not required until you make E8, uh, the Senior NCO Academy. And I think overall, even though I didn't particularly enjoy attending these schools, I think overall they were beneficial. I learned a lot about leadership and about, uh, you know, you know, how to effectively communicate in the Air Force and things like that. Which I will point out that how to effectively communicate in the Air Force doesn't necessarily translate into effectively communicating elsewhere, anywhere uh, else, family, right. civilian workplace. <laughs> Uh, McDonald's, like you can't, you can't <laughs> translate it anywhere. It's, it's, it's its own special language. Yeah. So, I mean, I think those courses were beneficial, but someone had the brainchild to add these distance learning courses. Mm. So basically self-paced training modules that you would, you would read and study on your own and then have to schedule a proctored exam. Mm-hmm. And it's gone through different variations where, um, sometimes it was an optional, you could either take the distance learning or the in-residence course. Sometimes it was, uh, a supplement to, uh, basically a prerequisite. Like you cannot attend the in-residence course until you take the, the distance learning course. Yeah. So there's been different versions of that. And, and even within the same version, it's morphed m- multiple times. Cause when we were coming up, when we were like staff sergeants, there was course 12, which was a requirement to go before you went to senior NCO Academy, but everybody did it as a tech to make it look good for promotion to master. Right. So it basically became the de facto requirement 
as a tech sergeant, as an E6, to make E7. Like, you know, you weren't even going to be seriously considered for E7 unless you had that done. And then they, right. they took it away. They brought it back as course 14. And that's about the time that you and I were hitting stride, you know, in, in the tech master area. And that's when right. they started playing with everything and making it to where every two years the rules would change again. And it just morphed into mud. Right. So by the time I made E7, I'd already decided that I was getting out of the Air Force at 20 years. Right. I put on E7, uh, what, probably two years and some change, less than three years, I think, before my 20-year mark. Mm. So it was already pretty high up there. But I, So I knew that I was not going to make Senior Master Sergeant, uh, not only because I knew I was getting out. Like, like I would have had to make, make it my very first attempt, which it's not fucking happening because I wasn't doing any of the extra BS right. Uh, because they, they start to, when the higher you get in rank, they start to judge you basically on like extra shit that you do, like all of your extra curriculars. And, you know, and like, it's not how often you go to church. It's how often you spend time away from your family in order to do air force stuff is really what it comes down to. Right. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're the, um, you know, the president of the fucking, uh, uh yearbook club, like, you know, to put it into into high school terms. If you're the president of the yearbook club, you know, you're going to get some bonus points. Right. Well, want to be on the yearbook club. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, so course, course 14 was one of these requirements for E sixes and the, well, E sixes could volunteer to take it early, mm-hmm. but E sevens, it, it was a requirement in order to be eligible for E eight. And like I said, I'd already decided I don't want E8 and I want to get out at 20. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's that. That's what's going to happen. And that, in fact, was what happened. <laughs> and, <laughs> and 34 months, by the way, you, you, you had Mass Sergeant on for 34 months. Excellent. How the hell did you figure that out? Because we sewed on on the same day and that we sewed on one November. Um, <gasps> and we sewed on... And you, you, you joined one September, September, October, November would have been two months. You just take the 36 months minus two. Right. Yeah. All right. So just shy of three years. <laughs> <laughs> Getting out. Um, yeah. So it didn't matter. Like every time I would talk to someone higher ranking than me, E8s and E9s, they were up my shit about where are you at with course 14? Mm-hmm. Like, Sir, we, we talked about this. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to take because the only benefit to taking this distance learning was to make yourself eligible for promotion. That is precisely the only reason for, for me to have taken it. And I told, I'm like, no, I'm not going to waste that time because it's, it's like an intensive course, right? It's not something you can just, you know, take a quick CBT and then test out. you, You meander your way through and they made it more difficult as we went along. Right. And it was, I was constantly harassed mm. and basically right up until my retirement was scheduled. Mm. Like not, not once my retirement date was set. I'm talking about when my retirement ceremony was scheduled and on the wing calendar, I was harassed up to that point about this stupid fucking course. So for two plus years, I was constantly just like, Hey, Sergeant Fleur, why, why, why haven't you, why haven't you signed up for course 14? Well, I actually did sign up for course 14, uh, saw, I got access to the course and saw how intensive and time consuming this would be. And I was like, nah, <laughs> nah, if I'm going to do this, like I'm going to get a college degree out of it. Not some fucking, you can get a management certificate. Yeah. Fuck off with that. So, so yeah. stupid. Um, but so, so anyway, the point I was trying to make with all of this, uh, well actually, oh, right, hold on. Spoiler alert here. The Secretary of the Air Force decided that Course 14 and also the Course 15 that's for tech sergeants is gone. It's dumb. Get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's dumb. It's redundant. It's stupid. Go away. And to me, it's about fucking time, dude. So let me tell you just real real quick. Let me me, me rant just a little. (laughs) I think you got a preview of this. I think I gave you an earful or actually an eyeful on the uh, the instant messaging service that we have in Air Force. Uh, I don't even know if you read it. You probably saw a bunch of words coming from me. Like, yep, close it. Uh, 
So I, I really loved being in the Air Force. I, I, I loved my career. I loved being a weapons troop, uh, which, you know, the aircraft uh, weapons loader. So I, you know, I was the guy that hung bombs and missiles on airplanes. Uh, I, I really loved that. I loved the mission. I loved the people, all of that stuff. And I was really looking forward to being in E7, a master sergeant, which is the, that's the first rank to become a senior NCO. Like mm. you are true enlisted leadership for the Air Force. You're no longer working. You're now managing. Right. And I really looked forward to that because I felt like I had a lot to pass on. I was very passionate about certain things. Uh, I, I really wanted to mentor the younger troops. I wanted to to train. Um, uh, you know, there were certain things like certain maintenance processes that I thought could be done better. And as a senior NCO, I felt like I would have that power to, to maybe affect some change, at least locally. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I was really look, looking forward to that and being a flight chief. Well, I achieved my goal. My career goal was to be the armament flight chief. And I achieved that. So I thought, awesome, this is it. Here's my time, right? I'm going to, the last year and some change of my career is going to be, you know, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to, you know, not, not just in the Air Force as a whole, but like to individuals in their lives. Like I was so invigorated to do this thing. And no, I didn't have time to do any of that shit. Like once in a while, I, like I would have the opportunity to mentor occasionally. Um, maybe once I got to help train certain tasks. Uh, but the vast majority, and I'm talking like 95% of my fucking time as a master sergeant was buried under paperwork or attending meetings that didn't fucking matter. Like there was a daily meeting that said the same shit and it was an hour long and I had to be at the damn thing every day. Uh, it was just th- the bureaucracy of it was so painful and I want so terribly, like it's too late for me. Like I've done retired and fucking moved on. Mm-hmm. But I, my hope for future generations of, of senior NCOs is that the Air Force finally realizes that there is a lot of senior NCOs that don't need groomed anymore. They do not need career enrichment. They have reached where they need to fucking be. Mm. They've received the training they need. They are now a fully functional senior NCO. Let them be a senior NCO. Because one of the problems throughout my career, and I'm sure you can attest to this too, Amos, is that we're constantly being groomed for the next stage, mm. groomed for promotion. You know, it's always about readiness and, 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 and development, career development. And fuck off, man. I'm not going to develop any further. I've got a year and a half left of my career. I'm not going to get promoted anymore. Let me be the flight chief that I want to be. Right. But I, I couldn't. I was constantly harassed about course 14 and all of this other crap. Like, oh, why aren't you why aren't you in charge of any committees? Because I don't fucking care about your committees. The only reason I would join one of those was, would be to try to get promoted, which I'm not. Mm-hmm. Let me spend time with my airmen. Let me help. Let me help them. Uh, but instead, my airmen barely knew who their flight chief was. Like they knew knew my name and my face. But very few of them got to know me in any capacity whatsoever. Right. And that to me is fucking sad and unacceptable. This is uh, the definition as far as the Air Force goes. This, this is the Peter Principle. Um, yes. Where you're constantly being groomed. You're, you're, you're chosen on your, on, on your next – you're chosen for your next job based on the performance of this job. And then once you're chosen for that job, if you don't fit, they try to force it into you or force you out as opposed to leaving you in the position where you're comfortable and you're effective. And that's kind of, it's kind of just how, how the Air Force has been. It's how the military has been really. And yeah, it's, I, I'm just going to say, cause I, I know we're probably born some people with the Air Force talk. Yeah, um, I know. I'm just going to say that I'm glad all the changes I've seen in the Air Force in the last f- four years have been positive. So since right about the time you retired, really, just before you retired, right. um, they started backing down on some of the stupid stuff. They've been 
uh, cutting down on the repetitious bullshit, uh, the training that we just don't need all the stinking time, or cutting out the training and actually doing in-class training with actual qualified people that can yes. teach us more than a web page can teach us. Um, all that stuff, all that stuff is getting better. Like the Air Force is on this upward trajectory. Like the 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 quality of life, the quality of training, the quality of experience, the amount of time you're you're able to spend to do your job, what you're supposed to be doing, as opposed to doing all this other tertiary shit, is getting better. Yeah, that's we, we that's came fair. in, Kent. We came in either twenty years too late or twenty years too soon. <sighs> yeah, I think you. I think you nailed it. So, um, yeah, I think it's great. So it, anyone out there that is in the Air Force now or is thinking about joining the Air Force, uh, don't let this discourage you. Let this actually encourage you. What, what now, Amos said. Now's the time. Yeah, now's the time. they're fixing and, shit. They're making things better. Yep. And uh, I'm going to do my part because I work for the Air Force still mm. as a civilian, and I don't have to put up with any of the, the tertiary, secondary or tertiary or whatever bullshit I just do my job and mm -hmm. I'm there to help people. Right. And it's fucking amazing. Yeah. And I'm going to do like, I've, I've got a little bit of, of power in certain areas and I, I try to do what I can, uh, you know, to make things better, at least in, in my office and in my group. And, uh, I actually get the opportunity to mentor airmen once in a while, which I think is awesome. And, Anyway, if you are in the in the in the Air Force, look me up on the global and let's talk Air Force shit. Uh, but anyway, uh, Amos, enough about that. I want to tell you something. Um, I don't think I'm. I, I don't know. I don't know how willing I am to listen right now. <laughs> well, uh, I'm gonna tell you anyway. Okay. Um, Uranus smells like shit. Um, does Pluto smell like vagina? <laughs> um, I, honestly, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe, maybe you could go Google that someday. But, uh, but yeah, your anus smells like shit. Yeah, I guess that shouldn't be surprising, right? Um, probably not. <laughs> so NASA actually discovered that the the composition of the atmosphere of the planet Uranus, or Uranus, if you if you prefer, is made up of gases that smell like rotten eggs or a really bad fart. Hmm. Ammonia and hydrogen sulfide make up the the bulk of Uranus's atmosphere. So Uranus literally smells like a fart. That's I mean it couldn't come at a better time. <laughs> Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow! Oh my god, I can't wait to see where he goes with this. <laughs> oh oh man, hey, you know something that better not smell like shit? Uh, my breath. Uh, well, I don't care if your breath smells like shit, dude. You're in, <laughs> you're in New Mexico. Like, I can't smell it. If I, if I can smell your breath, no matter what your breath smells like, if I can smell it all the way up here in Alaska, you have issues. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, whoa, or uh, yeah, I rue the day that microphones can pick up scent, uh, and we, I, we come up with with smell o vision. I don't want smell o vision. <laughs> no, me neither. I, I don't want to smell the people I meet in real life. Like, <laughs> I have people that walk into my office that smell like absolute dog shit, and it just pisses me off. Oh, um, my. yeah, no. Uh, Star Wars Resistance better not smell like shit. Better not be like shit. It better be good. It better be, it better be a well-polished turd at, at the very oh, least. Yeah, so Star Wars announced yesterday, I think, that uh, their next animated series is coming out this fall, and it's called Star Wars Resistance. And it's going to take place uh, just before the events, or j at some point before the events of The Force Awakens. So it's kind of the you know new... new uh, uh, new timeline, I guess, mm. uh, time period, the, the recent time period in the Star Wars universe. It's going to focus a lot on pilots. Uh, Filoni said that he was influenced a lot by uh, World War II, uh, dogfighting and stuff like that. Uh, so it's going to be pretty cool. It's about a, a new a character, a new pilot, uh, Kazuda something or another, I think. But it's going to have some familiar characters K like Kazuda, Kazuda Ziono. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> Poe Dameron is going to make some appearances, and he's going to be voiced by Oscar Isaac, 
mm. the actor who plays him in the movies, uh, Captain Phasma, voiced by uh, Gwendolyn Christie, who played her in the movies. Um, it's it, it sounds great. I was hoping that the next animated series would follow up more directly with Rebels mm. because the the way that epi- or the the way that show ended up. Uh, but I'm fine. I, I think they'll probably explore that more in comics or novels or something like that. Uh, I'm I'm pretty excited about this. It it, it looks like it's going to be great. It's going to be uh, animated, pretty much in an anime style. So it should be pretty cool. This is just one more thing that I have yet to catch up on. And I'm saying that now because I'm not going to get caught up to where I'm ready to watch it until after it comes out. So it's going to be one more thing I'm going to have had to catch up on. (gasps) Right, right. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, it looks awesome, though. Um, Dude, this is something I didn't realize happened until you put it in the show notes, but the the Venom trailer came out. This looks badass. Dude. So several months ago, they came out with a teaser trailer for Venom, and it was the biggest pile of stinking shit that I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Like it is a terrible, terrible teaser. I was like, I was ready to completely write this movie off, and a couple days ago, they dropped the full trailer, mm-hmm. and it actually looks like a Venom movie, dude. Yeah, no, it it it, it looks pretty awesome. Um, I I mean, I I'm not I'm not fully up to speed on the whole the 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 canon of Venom. Um, so some things in here kind of confused me a little bit, but they didn't take me so far out of the experience that I, that I had doubts for the movie. It actually still excited me for the movie. And again, what's the purpose of the trailer? Do I want to watch it no more now or before I watch the trailer? And I want to watch it more now after I've watched the trailer. And that's the job of the trailer. So thumbs up. Yes. Yep. Yep. We are Venom. Yeah. Um, Looking forward to it. Plus, the guy that plays the uh, the bad dude in this movie just looks like a total prick. So uh, I'm always for that. I'm always for for people he's, that look like assholes in, being assholes. Yeah, he's actually in Rogue One. He's the pilot from Rogue One. Yeah, he looks like a dick. <laughs> so <laughs> he, he certainly does in this movie. <laughs> uh, yeah. So one more thing that I watched this week. There's a documentary on Netflix called Mercury Thirteen. And it is about women that were attempting to be the first female astronauts. This was way back in the 60s, right in the middle of the space race with Russia. Mm-hmm. Uh, women pilots were allowed to uh, basically go through all of the testing to become astronauts. So like, have you ever seen the movie The Right Stuff? Mm-hmm. Where yeah, where it goes through all of the Mercury astronauts and the uh, you know all the testing and all of the all of the stuff that that made them astronauts. Mm-hmm. These women went through the exact same thing. In fact, Doctor Loveless, the doctor that NASA used that that headed up that Mercury program, as far as the the medical side of it, he is the one that invited the women to go do the testing, and he wanted them to become astronauts. And because of the the cultural place that we were in the 60s, it pretty quickly became apparent that it was unacceptable for women to be astronauts. Right. And anyway, I don't I don't want to spoil everything, but the the documentary is all about that. The 13 women. uh, Actually, I don't think it was even 13. Uh, But anyway, so they were called Mercury 13. Uh, they they were the women that uh, you know were initially looked at. They were they were all pilots. Uh, they were the w- women that were on track to become astronauts. Had NASA not just said, actually it was Congress that said like, nah, we don't need you. Hmm. Uh, it's it's very good. It it's not only is it a a good historical documentary that that shows you something that you didn't know about. It's also I believe very inspiring uh, because it, t- it takes you through the like the, the challenges that these women went through, not just to become astronauts like like uh, John Glenn and, and Alan Shepard and those guys went through. They went through that, but they also had to do it as women in the 1960s. And 
the you know the the, the failure the ultimate failure of that program etc and then the well anyway you, you should watch it i recommend it to absolutely everyone it's inspiring as hell i think it's great uh, and i'm not even a woman i am i can only imagine how inspiring and uplifting it is for women that watch this so for the primary demographic yeah b- Two huge thumbs up for this. It's Mercury 13 on Netflix. Nice. All right, man. Um, hey, this weekend is uh, the Diamond Club movie party. Oh, hell yeah, dude. It's this Saturday. And um, that is... It's going to be Troll 2 and what? Yeah, Troll 2 and something else. If you head over to the movie party's Twitter, which is uh, at DC Movie Party on Twitter, there is actually a poll up right now that you can help select the movie right now the um the thing with two heads i think is in first place um but yeah like you can help choose what movie we watch as the second and uh it's gonna be a great time troll 2 is one of my favorite movies of all time it is super fucking fun it's 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 renowned as one of the worst movies of all time which in turn makes it one of the best movies of all time. And it's so much fun to watch, especially with friends. If you join us on the Diamond Club movie party, I guarantee you're going to have a great time watching Troll 2 and whatever else it is we decide to watch. That's awesome. Um, hey, uh, if people want to find out more about you and where, where, what you're doing online, where can they go, man? Yeah, head over to the Twitter. I am RM underscore Del Noche. Pretty much Del Noche or Del Noche 77 everywhere else. What about you, dude? Uh, Ethan Kane or Ethan Kane 77 in a few random places, but mostly just Ethan Kane. E T H A N C A I N E. I just like spelling it. Um, you can follow the show at Ritual Misery, and you can find out all the cool ways that you can support the show and find out all the other things that we're doing by going to ritualmisery.com and clicking on a little support link or clicking on little other things or click of these, click of these, click of that. Um, Thank you for, uh, for for joining us this week. Um, it's been a fun show. Uh, a lot of talk about the Air Force, but that's okay. Forgive us. And uh, for me, for you, and for Kent, this has been your Rich Misery Project. Give you zero time. you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> <laughs>